Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about Unit 7, Urbanization and Cities. In this video, we will cover the origin of cities, urban hierarchy, models for American city development, and how cities and other continents differ from American cities. Origin of Cities Permanent settlements started to come around the Neolithic Revolution, or the first agricultural revolution, since now they had a steady supply of food for them to eat. This era was called the Formative Era, which was between 4000 BCE to 2000 BCE, as villages started to become more prominent. Around 3000 BCE, villages started to grow bigger, and more specific jobs started to come around, since not everyone had to work on the farm. The very first cities started to appear in Asia and Northern Africa. In Africa, they appeared near the Nile River in Egypt. Then they moved over to Mesopotamia along the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Cities also came around the Indus River in South Asia and the Yellow and Yangtze Rivers in early China. The first cities in Europe started around the Aegean Sea. Urban Hierarchy For a city to come about, it needs to start off small and get larger. A hamlet is the first step to becoming urbanized. Hamlets only include a few dozen people and don't offer a lot of services. They are clustered around a center, which is usually just a gas station or a general store. The next step is to become a village. Villages are larger than hamlets and offer more services. Instead of just a general store, villages can offer a stores that are based in a couple of things like food or clothing. They also gather more people so that the town grows bigger and the center becomes larger as well. Next up is becoming a town. Towns can consist of 50 people up to a few thousand people. They have an urban area with a defined boundary but are still smaller than cities based on the size of the town and its population. After towns, the next step is to become a city. Cities are larger and more densely populated which can include tens of thousands of people. A lot more services have come around and suburbs start developing because people want to stay close to work but live in a safer environment. After cities, megalopolises form. Megalopolises have large populations and incorporate large areas. They are usually focused around one large city. The central city and the suburbs bordered each other with the suburbs being dependent on the city. Models for city development. For the models, there are three major models on how cities are shaped. They are the concentric zone model, the sector model, and the multinuclei model for American cities. The central place theory explains how a city works with goods and services. The concentric zone model was made in 1923 by E.W. Burgess. It says that a city develops in a series of rings that can vary in size and expand away from the city. The inner ring, or ring one, is the CBD or central business district, which contains the commercial and business services and is often called the downtown section of a city. The next ring is called the zone of transition, which contains industry and poor quality housing. Immigrants and single individuals tend to live in the area frequently created by subdividing larger houses into apartments. Most people in the area rent instead of owning it themselves. The zone that is in the middle is called the zone of working class, which is composed of modest older houses occupied by working class families in which a large percentage of the families rent but some own their own houses. The zone of better residences is zone 4 and contains the newer, more spacious housing. This zone is inhibited by the middle class and the houses are mostly owned, not rented. The last zone is called the commuter zone, which is located the farthest away from the city. This area is mostly upper class residents with very few middle class residents. The sector model was made in 1939 by Homer Hoy. It states that a city develops in sections surrounding the CBD and that different areas attract different activities by chance or by environmental factors. This model has five sections, the CBD, industry slash transportation, low class residential, middle class residential, and high class residential. In the industry section, it is mostly factories and the main public transportation routes that go through the CBD. The low class residential is next to the transportation and industry section and contains the low income housing. They live there to reduce transportation costs to help them get closer to their work. The middle class residential section surrounds the other sectors but is further away from the transportation zone, making it more desirable. It is the largest residential area and it still has access to transportation lines for working people that work in the CBD. The high class residential is the outermost edge and furthest away from the industry zone. It contains the best housing and has the least traffic. The multinuclear model was made in 1945 by Chauncey Harris and Edward Ullman. They said that the CBD was losing its importance in relation to the rest of the city and should be seen as a nucleus rather than the focal point. The different zones developed into independent areas based off of their activities, and each were near zones that they were compatible with. The zones included the CBD, which is at the center, light manufacturing, which is to the left side of the CBD and creates the easy products, the low-class residential, which is above the light manufacturing and the CBD, as well as below it, the middle-class residential, which is located to the right of the 
CBD, the upper class residential, which is located to the right of the middle class zone, the heavy manufacturing, which is located at the bottom of the lower class residential and takes care of the heavier products that cause more pollution, the outlying business district, which is located between the middle class residential and the upper class residential and is usually a mall, the residential suburb, which is located below the upper class residential and contains upper middle class, and the industrial suburb, which is located near the heavy manufacturing zone and contains the lower class people that work in the factories. The central place theory is a model created by Walter Castell in 1933. The model is in the shape of a hexagon to make sure that no space is left untouched. The central place in the middle is the source of service. The threshold is the number of people needed to support the service, which is the space around the central place. The range is how far a service can stretch out to, and the market area slash hinterland is the boundary line for the service. Castell came to two conclusions based upon the model. One is that towns of the same size are evenly spaced because they are in the center of congruent market areas, and the towns are part of an interdependent system, so if a central place is eliminated, then the entire system readjusts to fill up the hole. Cities and other continents. European cities are older than American cities and thus have different structures in them. The cities are more compact and shorter with skyscrapers placed on the outside of town because they have a philosophy that says what is old should be preserved. They are also arranged in the opposite ways of an American city because the wealthy live in the central city and the lower classes live in the suburbs. European cities also have zoning laws that determine where buildings can be put and how the land can be used. The zoning laws are split up into four different types, residential, commercial, industrial, and institutional, but the zones can be mixed. Asian cities are mostly located on the coast, which help with the trading that the countries do. Many of the cities also have specific zones, but they are for Western companies to locate within their borders, providing thousands of jobs. The cities are modernized since they are relatively new and have multiple skyscrapers in the city. Office parks are popping up everywhere, which are agglomerations with shared phone and internet services, and they share the same transportation infrastructure. Asian cities actually don't have a formalized CBD, making growth occur throughout the city, but they grow according to the zoning laws and their economies. Latin American cities are experiencing one of the world's fastest urban growth rate, but still prefer to integrate their native past into their architecture. They are growing so fast due to the fact that so many people are coming in from the countryside and building slums to live in the city. The cities are actually laid out like a hub and spoke of a bicycle wheel, with the CBD in the center, the high residential area extending outwards, the middle class residential filling up a small space, and the slums on the edge of the cities. African cities are the fastest growing urban areas in the world today, with most of the people coming in from the poor countryside to look for work. Cities in northern Africa that are Muslim dominated have a high growth rate, but the most of the growth occurs in sub-Saharan Africa. African cities have three distinct CBDs, with the headquarters of the government found in the colonial CBD, a market or a bazaar to be the consumer section of the city, and the traditional CBD which holds many of the financial institutions and the commercial center for the city. African cities have the three CBDs with ethnic neighborhoods extending outwards from them, and beyond them are the mining and manufacturing zones as well as the squatter settlements. African cities lack the transportation systems that other cities have because of the lack of infrastructure or not enough money. They are also affected by the high rates of HIV and large numbers of orphan and homeless children. That's the end, and thanks for watching.